Hello comrades, Commissar Bro here today with another episode of Hearts of Djibouti, that's right. And uh, I've been playing a bit ahead, you know, just to kind of push things along a bit, as it were. And, uh, you know, forces are becoming thin. We're being spread very, very thin. Thankfully, though, because of the fact that uh, we're utilizing very small um, units and whatnot, we're not having attrition deficits such as the actual Indian forces are. Um, as you can see, they're really, really struggling uh, with the very limited amount. <laughs> Look at that guy. That's a funny looking fella. Um, they're, they're struggling with attrition. Truly, it's, it's becoming a major issue here. And the fact that they keep utilizing larger units of men to try to hold the border is not helping them win this fight. Matter of fact, the only real way they could is if they improve their infrastructure, which I doubt they're going to do. Uh, with that said, no big deal. That just means that I'm going to have an easier chance of conquering the uh, Indian subcontinent. So, uh, furthermore, we're moving in with roller divisions under John Roberts. Uh, again, he's a very unskilled general. He's very fresh and green. But I think he's more than capable of leading my great Djiboutian army. That's right. Before we get playing and everything like that, um, one question that was requested before was um, we wanted to see what the Tilt of World Brigade could, consists of. So um, here you go. This is what the Tilt of World Brigades look like. There's three infantries, four artilleries, and one mountaineers with military police, um, field hospitals, recon companies, logistics, and engineering company the only one that i might change in there would be the military police but the suppression bonus i believe is helpful uh, in the increase slight increase in reliability uh, we could always do a signal company instead to give the additional initiative but i don't think that's going to really help much and honestly if you look at all the reds compared to all the greens eh eh I just don't think it matters too much. Either which way, these uh, these brigades have a high organization, well, relatively speaking, 26.9. Um, they have a high soft attack. I mean, they are anti-infantry through and through. Uh, they're not as powerful as the Sandland Liberator uh, units, but the Sandland Liberator divisions, unfortunately, have very low HP, whereas the tilt worlds are... Uh, because of the just the pure mass of infantry, they can take much more of a beating. Uh, and they're, they have less, as you can see, they have a bunch of positive bonuses, um, either moving or attacking in places, compared to, say, the Sandland Liberator divisions, which get huge deficits because of the inclusion of modern tanks and so on. Uh, and finally, roller divisions... Uh, it's made up of m primarily mechanized infantry. These are kind of what I should be moving towards. Uh, they're basically the most effective of both sides. They just don't have those other bonuses. But as far as it goes, I mean, these are where it's at. Uh, these are the most effective of my army. And uh, that's actually why I'm using those to push into India here. But again, supplies. We have to be very careful with supplies to not get caught off. Uh, or lose sight or lose objectives. If we do, that could be very problematic. Um, that's actually why I'm pushing into Mumbai, though. Like, if we can take Mumbai now um, and conquer it while we have air superiority and I have nuclear warheads, as you can see, I've dropped about eight <laughs> on the Indian forces so far uh, to just literally soften them up because they're not letting this go very easily. I'm going to drop a bomb right there, too, to go ahead and hit those guys that are trying to move. Uh, boom. There we go. Real nasty shot. Oh, and look, SP artillery. So there's been some new technology since the last time I played this game, so don't be surprised if I'm researching new stuff. Uh, they've changed up the mod a little bit here and there with tech trees. Again, it has been quite a long time, so I'm really not surprised. One of the other major objectives I'm currently working on is repairing... Gujarat. The uh, main reason I want to conquer it now is because the levels are completely damaged, and that's because of the fighting that's occurring there. If we can push up and start moving into other areas, we can spread out and establish a strong infrastructure base in Gujarat, um, and uh, we can use that to push towards uh, Delhi and take over Delhi. Again, Delhi being the capital of India. So if we can take that over... 
I mean, we'll be solid uh, as far as it goes. The only other major city is uh, Hyderabad, or that's the secondary uh, capital, essentially, is what it would be. Um, there's still other cities, as you can see, but for the most part, most of the victory points are centered in those two cities, uh, Delhi and Hyderabad. Um, what about Calcutta? Oh, and Calcutta as well. Uh, but honestly, the Indians would probably have surrendered by that point. I mean, look, they're already... Uh, it controls 70 and will... Has, I mean, I guess they're already looking to surrender now that we've taken Mumbai. It'll be interesting to see if they do. Um, probably by the end of the month, we'll know for sure. Oh, there they go. India has capitulated. They have completely surrendered. That is absolutely insane. I did not expect that to happen at all. Okay, so we now have India. <laughs> that was a little anticlimactic, wasn't it, though? <laughs> okay, all right, so basically just taking Mumbai literally broke the back of uh, our opponents. So we're going to set John Roberts up as the new ruler of India. He's going to uh, position his men and garrison these territories the, thankfully, the Indians' allies did not have any troops really stationed in the country, thus meaning this just got a lot easier for us to go ahead and occupy it all. But they do still have something there and there, which, oh, uh, that's going to be problematic. I guess what whatever units they had there, we're going to have to deal with, but... This frees up and gives us a lot more factories. I mean, we just jumped up. Our power, like just industri industrial uh, capacity alone, increased by 25. No, 33% just now by taking over India. So it's there's no doubt in my mind we are by far one of the most powerful countries in the world. Uh, and even our population uh, in total just increased... How much? How much did it increase? Doesn't it normally say it here what total manpower is? 10 point eligible. Oh, it's just saying what eligible. It's not saying what's uneligible uh, or ineligible, which would be like fucking 2 billion people. So, yeah, we're looking pretty good, guys. It's looking pretty good. But we need to start getting more things, more airplanes. Uh, yes, definitely more airplanes. We have plenty of artillery, plenty of motorized vehicles. Uh, we're still working on boats. Uh, I don't know. What else should we increase? Get more of? Maybe start building these things? I don't think that would really be a worthwhile expenditure of resources for such. Uh, we're still... Actually, we're still upgrading our main battle tanks. So that's what we'll do. We'll just make another one. Because uh, we're still trying to catch up in that regard. And uh, we still have free military factories? Oh my goodness. Why do I have so much? Jeez, I don't even know what to do with all of this. Well, we're going to start making the DLA Griffins Gen 4 attack aircraft. I'm actually going to swap all those over. So we've got drop zones. We've got Griffins. I've actually started giving names to stuff, as you can see. La, la, da, 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 da. And what's another? Tennessee Tornado. Yeah, we're going to start building some of those. Uh, so yeah, we have a whole list of things that we can build, but we still need to repair uh, most of our factory, not most, but a pretty good chunk of our factories we're going to have to fix and get that whole thing solved. Thankfully, though, because the Indians did surrender, there's so much territory here that um, didn't get destroyed in the fighting, so that means it's going to be way less stuff we have to worry about repairing. Uh-oh. Nigeria's got troops. Uh, that's interesting. It's an interesting location to have troops. And see, like, we barely even have to garrison the continent with any soldiers. Um, yeah. And because of my occupation policies, resistance is futile and very limited. Very, very limited. All right. So we did get a whole bunch more nuclear factories as well, so that's pretty cool. I think we just almost doubled it. I guess the Indians had a lot of nukes that they just weren't using. Whatever. Seems legit. Uh, we are at 477 in factories now. Um, that's everything. That's civilian, naval, and military factories. There's a lot of those that are damaged, as you can see there. 36 plus 4, so what, 40 plus 27, 67 factories in total are damaged right now. Resistance to occupation in, in Delhi. 
Well, that's not good. That's no good at all. Um, I got, honestly, we just need to get more troops. Uh, so Peter Evans, we're actually, what is Peter Evans? Where, bah, 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 bah. Where are you at? Here you are. All right. What I want you to do is reassign all those units over there. And yeah, they're just going to sail across the ocean and go be garrisoned in the new continent, the new land of Djibouti. We shall add curry, sweet, delicious curry to our Djiboutian enterprises. That's right. Ah, man, it's good to be king. So, the question comes, what do we do now? We've taken over India. We've taken over Saudi Arabia. Uh, I mean, we own the majority of Africa. So, where should we push next? Should we push against... Uh, honestly, we couldn't take China if we wanted to. Like, the Chinese military is far stronger than ours. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, however, we are on really good terms with the Chinese, which is something that I think we need to and stick with. We need to stay on the good side of the Chinese, uh, because basically the three most powerful country or units or yeah, factions, I should say, uh, are going to be the Chinese, uh, the Europeans and the European Union and ourselves. As you remember, Norway took a giant chunk out of Russia, and Russia has basically been neutered under this new regime that it's a part of. Uh, so, really, I'm not too concerned. Yeah, that's right, because they're a puppet of the United States. So, that's interesting. So, the question, oh my god, Hillary Clinton is the president. Was this like that before? Because I don't remember. <laughs> Friend of Germany, Britain, and France. So, the concern with the United States is you don't know whose side they're on. Um, and in the case of this, like France didn't join, well, no, they did join NATO. So they're part of the European Union faction, but they didn't actually join the European Union itself, which has become its own entity. And the question becomes, what do we do with that? Do we push against them? Do we not? Do we push against someone else? I don't know. I have no idea what we should do next. So, I guess that's a good place to end this, because again, I did not expect the capitulation of India to be a thing, but we definitely cut off the head of the uh, the snake, in this case, and now it's it's done. The Indians have surrendered. What would? How much would someone have to take of my empire? Okay, so like you would have to literally take everything from me for my empire to surrender. Which is good, though. I dig that. I totally dig that. Um, so, the people were still at war, though. We're still at war with Ukraine, Cambodia, and Japan. Japan, I guess, is still somehow in this war. Um, no idea how. As we see that little territory right there, I guess that's that's their their ground. But then we've got Ukraine and Cambodia, who are really the only two left in the second Djibouti-Nigerian War. Uh, Cambodia being in the Vietnam area see right there which is still a little bit too far out of our range and then there's andaman well that's where that's where the indians are is uh they still hold out on this territory here so we would need to take that naval base if we're going to be able to eventually reach cambodia uh i still think it would be a hell of a lot easier just to go through someone like myanmar but we don't want to go to war with too many people especially in the uh, the sphere of influence of china Maybe it would be better if we could actually get these people on our side to fight alongside us. That might be a more effective strategy, but I don't know how likely it would be. Um, furthermore, I don't really know what else we can do. If there's going to be much we can do to convince, especially the Islamist factions, to join us. That's actually something I wish would happen. I wish the uh, Islamist fac factions here in the Middle East, like, or, well, not really, but, you know, Iran and... Um, uh, Pakistan and whatnot, I kind of wish they would kind of form a, their own faction, join another party that could put up a fight against the uh, forces of NATO and so on. But, you know, that's all wishful, hopeful thinking. We've still got Jordan over here who's on really good terms with us. They really like us. They are a monarchist faction, but they are not in a faction at all. Um, the world tension would need to be at least 50%. And for the actual kingdom of Jordan to join us, world tension would have to be 100, which basically means 
a lot of people would have to be really pissed off and a lot of shit would have to be going down for that to happen. But anyway, this has been Commissar Bro. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Leave uh, you know stuff in the comments about what you think we should do next and where we should go from here. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.